coming at you. Happy Homebrew Wednesday, everyone. Looky here. It's not quite ready. It needs to carbonate some more, but this is the Dropkick Nate. That's right. DKN. That's a bit all right. I grabbed this before uh, the gelatin was put in. I had it sitting actually two days chilling. Can't quite get it down to uh, that total cold crash level, but now we're going to we're gonna see what it'll do nonetheless, and uh, I'll probably be drinking it in a couple days here. So we've been doing some uh, projects, like the new roof. <laughs> a lot of projects like that summer, which hopefully won't keep me away from brewing. But let me show you some of the improvements I've been making preparing for the next round of brewing on the Braumeister. Cheers, everyone. Hey, so I've been making some improvements. Got a lot of stuff going on. I got a lot of stuff to show you today. I'm gonna get through this quickly as I can and show a bunch of other clips, but cheers, here's some uh, Dropkick Nate. Not quite ready yet, but yeah, I couldn't wait. I had to get some. Already shared some with uh, the uh, contractors and they got to try the chocolate. And by the way, we did uh, this peanut butter addition to my milk stout and uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I'm going to have links for this. Uh, this is coming from uh, Victor Brews. And now, if you don't know, he and his wife own a flavorings company, and they do all natural flavorings. They're not bending molecules to make these right here. I'm going to have a link to their place. I can't think of it off the top, but Victor Brews, check out his channel. I'll have a link to that as well. And he kindly sent some of this to me. I'm going to make a full batch for this, but what I've been doing is adding it in over here uh, to my current brew. And damn, a few people are going to get some bottles from me of that. Meanwhile, I've wanted to make some changes to the brew system to make it even easier with the Braumeister. The first one is water. I want to be able to not be lifting buckets. Part of this was not was all about not lifting. And uh, you might remember my water filter. So with my water filter, I got rid of the uh, kind of clumsy, uh, heavier plastic and went for the heat type. Uh, not that I need it for heat, but it's so flexible that this will be great. And I added on this nozzle right here, this uh, valve, I should say, um, so that I can turn the water on. I can attach it easily to my hose. This is just like something you'd find in your plumbing at home. And uh, so that connects on, and then I can have a valve over here. And then I can rig this up right into the Braumeister. And uh, now that I know what the lines represent in terms of volume, I should be pretty solid on volumes. And, uh, and then go ahead and turn it off and on, going right through the filter after doing a one-time rinse on it each time I do. Um, and fill it right at the source and no more lifting. So that should be really cool. Looking forward to that. The other issue that I've had is my fermentation chamber has a Johnson controller on it and it's just either uh, high or low one or the other and I've always had it on the chill side I use it in the warmer temperatures to get the temp down to whatever like 68 let's say but in the cooler months that's a problem and I end up back in the house without the controls that I've wanted so I did uh, talking to some of the guys out there and one of the guys out there Josh uh, you know I'm gonna say it, say it wrong Secor, uh, I think it is Josh Secor but you know uh, some of us know him as Josh Sexor Anyway, Josh, <laughs> I couldn't resist that. So he has used, and a few people have used different things like uh, the heating belt, but this one is the firm wrap, and I picked up a firm wrap, so I'm gonna play with working with that. And now uh, you do want a controller for this. So I kind of went the extra mile, and I won't fully be using it just yet, but it's for the future. Uh, I went with one of these Inkbird controllers. Now the Inkbird controller I went with is not the one that a lot of people are getting out there. ITC310T. I wanted to make sure I got that up there, ITC310T. And the reason for this is, as I recall off the top of my, my head here, it has temperature uh, controls by uh, day frames, time uh, date frames. And so you can uh, set six different temperatures for this. And it has both the high and low. So what I'm going to do is I'll have a right line running in, and it does have the probe. I am going to come up with uh, a new uh, stopper in the top that I can have the temperature probe running through. And uh, so I can have this right in 
uh, the fermentation bucket and um, be regulating the temp so it knows when it has to heat it up. The one side that's already built in will keep it plenty cool enough um, and then this will heat it up to, to balance it out and make sure that we keep it at that constant temperature. And uh, I think that's a great thing because now this will allow me to uh, keep the chamber cooler for all the beer and other things that I'm storing in there and this will heat it up that little bit of balance that I need. It can heat up to 20 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and I'm not looking to heat it up that much generally speaking maybe in the winter. But this way I can have stages so I can have it cooler and warmer and back and forth. Six different stages and one of the reasons for going for this is eventually what I want to do is get yes another fridge my wife's gonna kill me I'm glad she's, I'm not she's not here while I'm filming let's get a mini fridge and then use this uh, two stage both hot and cold uh, so I can just keep it at that exact temp range that I want to keep it at uh, in a and in a smaller space so I'm not heating and cooling as much in a little mini fridge that's my goal but in the meantime, this does the trick and it will move me forward uh, in the future as well. Uh, so if you're looking for both, both hot and cold, uh, these rain birds are fantastic. But this particular one can allow you to raise and lower temperatures uh, six different times, which is a pretty cool thing. All right. So what we're going to move to is some other footage I have. Honestly, I can't remember everything I have here today, but I know I've got some hiking footage. I visited a cool brewery uh, while out hiking on the Columbia River uh, and uh, I'm sure some other things. So check it out and we'll catch you next week. Happy Homebrew Wednesday. So check it out. The missus has made a cover for the Braumeister. That's right. <laughs> she says that if you need a cover for your uh, grandfather or Braumeister, let her know. She's selling covers. <laughs> Clemens Homebrew coming at ya on a happy Easter Sunday. And it's been beautiful here. It's just finally clouded up, but they've predicted rain all day and it's been fun. We've had Easter egg hunts and playing with the dogs. Mostly and cloudy, stuff. but not too bad. Not yeah. too bad. The sun's popping out again. So we're going to crack into a fun beer here. Right here, we've got Hair of the Dog. This is Doggy Claws. 2012. So you get some bitterness. There's a little bit of bitterness right off the top, but it's accented by the uh, kind of a toasty caramel flavor. Thomas would dig on this fresh. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got some hop to it, but you can tell it's been aged. Yeah. yeah. It started to drop I, off. I, fresh I remember fruits. when it was fresh, and you would have loved it fresh. The, the fresh aged, fruits dropped it's changed. Off. What's fun about good, these though. is when they get into the 10 year range. So we've got a little ways to go, but I've had Just some really old ones. It's good. Anyway, this is kind of our dessert beer. This is a happy homebrew Wednesday. I'm going to show you just a few quick clips. We're going to make it a short week. But yes, I was racking over the DK, the dropkick Nate. Oh man, he did that last drop of hops, dry hop, and that smelled really fantastic. And then how to set up for your vines. This is time to set up for your big hop vines and get them going this year. We will catch you all later. So cheers, everyone. Have a great happy homebrew Wednesday. Well, it's, it's hop growing season, so that means it's time to get some new twine up here for the hops to uh, kind of grip onto as they're going up. Uh, it works a lot better than this is pretty smooth. So I do have a hole here that I use and uh, real simply tie it off. And each year I just replace that. I mean, I've had the same bundle of twine for, it seems like countless years. And I kind of just wrap it around and of course, once you get the first hops going up, the other hops are just gonna kind of climb on the, the other hop lines coming up, the other hop vines. But you've just gotta make it really easy then for those first one or two vines to move up. Find about an inch and a half spacing is pretty good on this. Now, if you're just doing lines and they're just going up the lines, it's easy. But if you're using poles like what I have here, uh, then this is a great way to go. Now I do have lines that will attach to the top of this and I won't bring those out until the hops get up close to the top. Then down here at the bottom I'm going to take a really old tent stake that I've got and just put that in the ground and tie it off. Alright all my poles are strung and I'm ready to go. 
so those hops can take off and then we'll bring the lines down from the house later. It is time to rack over the dropkick nate. We've got our additional hops here. It's a, an ounce of Galaxy, an ounce of El Dorado. However, I still have a little more El Dorado. So we're going with one and a third ounces of El Dorado. Hey, you know, when it comes to hops, man, the more the merrier my, is my thought. So it'll be pretty close. <laughs> All right, everything's well sanitized. And we're just going to rack right over, right on top of those hops. And off we go. All righty, so we're racking over the dropkick nate into a keg. It's that time, baby. And then we're gonna drop those temps down and add some gelatin. Man, out on the trail today in Oregon. Love these uh, volcanic remains and areas. Big old trail, very less traveled. Babysitting uh, one of the grand dogs. Out on this side is the Columbia River and Bonneville Dam area. Just a beautiful day. Brewers, that's right. You can see all these bright tanks behind me. Look at that. And uh, we're gonna have some good eats and some good beer. I've already had a, uh, a strong blonde. Oh, and she tasted good. Freem Family Brewers. Let me tell you, I just had the uh, the lamb and duck confit stew. That was just a beautiful thing. I've got a Belgian strong ale here. You need to check them out. <laughs> Cheers.